It's time for Branding Business, the only show that brings branding experts and corporate executives together to explore how branding your business can improve both your top-line growth and bottom-line performance. Brought to you by Rikus Baird. And now, here's your host. Welcome to Branding Business with Rikus Baird. I'm Ryan Rikus, and today's show topic is focused on investment banking, and specifically the role a brand plays in the business of mergers and acquisitions. Today's guest is Tracy Albert, Managing Director of Houlihan Loki's Los Angeles office. Houlihan Loki is an international advisory-focused investment bank ranked by Thomson Reuters as number one M&A advisor for U.S. transactions under a billion dollars in 2010, and also the number one global M&A fairness opinion advisor over the past 10 years. So we're very lucky to have Tracy. Good morning. Good morning, Ryan. Thanks for being a guest on the show. Maybe we can begin by uh, having you tell us a little bit about your role at Houlihan Loki. Sure. So uh, I've had the uh, distinct pleasure of being at Houlihan for the past 15 years. Uh, I'm the managing director up in our uh, L.A. office and, um, you know, have been quite active uh, as an investment banker for a total of probably about 25 years, more, than, uh, more years than I'd like to mention. Well, appreciate your uh, your insights today, uh, and specifically speaking about mergers and acquisitions, and and the idea of a company for potential sell. Tell us about the process your firm undertakes. What are the uh, primary areas that you look at? The metrics, et cetera. Sure. So, um, you know, the, the firm is uh, as as you were kind enough to mention early on about the firm. We, uh, we handle about 150 plus transactions every year within the middle market space. Middle market we define as companies generally between 50 and 500 million dollars. Uh, you know, the good news is Houlihan is really kind of the uh, industry killer, if you will, or has led the way from the standpoint of doing about 150 transactions on an annual basis. I don't mean to get into a, uh, advertorial on the company, but, but it has really kind of helped us from the standpoint of Houlihan now uh, really has marketed itself and positioned itself to really kind of being the preeminent middle market bank in the country. As a result of that, um, we get literally our business from, you know, a broad uh, stream of, of both advisors uh, and, uh, and actual corporates who work with our bankers on an ongoing basis. We have about 16 industry groups and as a result of the activity within those six industry groups, and it's everything from automotive to medical to real estate, um, those people are constantly in the market talking to both the private companies as well as the public companies about really kind of the markets, uh, the indices, the trends that are kind of taking place. And as a result of that, um, we've got great, uh, we, we, we've got these relationships uh, where information is constantly disseminated back and forth. And when it comes time for many of these companies to think about a transaction of some sort or potentially doing a financing, uh, they will call us. Uh, so it, it's, uh, it's quite active, and especially now. And I can talk about some of the market trends here in a sec. But, um, but, but essentially what we do is we look at companies that, as I say, that are kind of in that value range between 550 and uh, $500 million. And um, as long as they have the proper, uh, the proper metrics from the standpoint of the profitability, Houlihan will look to, uh, to work with these companies. Well, well, Tracy, you mentioned trends. Can you give us some insights on what's happening today? Yeah, you know, I think that everybody's pretty familiar with the fact that, um, you know, we're, we're leave, living in, uh, in very, very choppy times. Um, you know, the European markets uh, continue, to, uh, continue to kind of pose tremendous questions about uh, the capitalization of, of a lot of these countries, their ability to just kind of service their own debt, let alone take care of their people. So, so with that, what we're seeing is essentially a, a fair amount of uncertainty from a macroeconomic outlook, uh, which has reintroduced caution amongst many of the corporates. Uh, management today remains focused, uh, you know, on generating growth selectively in certain areas. Um, 
you know, we're finding that companies, many of whom still have liquidity as they continue to sit, you know, on substantial cash balances, which is good and bodes well for companies like yourself, Ryan, you know, who are, who are really trying to help them uh, reposition themselves from certainly a branding standpoint or a product standpoint. The access to capital markets has diminished, meaning that um, a lot of the companies that really had gone to the lenders, you know, of the, the prime lenders as well as kind of lenders of last resort, that has become very, very difficult again. Not as difficult as it once was, but, but we're still seeing that there are issues there. Uh, the high yield markets really kind of backed up over the last little while. There, there's some belief that those are coming back, and we're kind of seeing some of that. Um, volatility in the equity capital markets has widened, and the valuation gaps between buyers and certainly in our business, sellers, uh, has increased. And, um, and we're also seeing, um, because of a lot of these companies uh, having uh, certainly been challenged by the markets, we're now seeing um, the increased shareholder activism as kind of a you know a continuing state where where shareholders are not satisfied with respect to the lackluster performance of, of essentially the companies that they sit on. Um, you know, I can give you some from a statistical standpoint. What we have seen in terms of the consumer confidence. If you if you want me to kind of go down that road and kind of talk about some of the metrics there. Well, just a quick overview, I think, would be helpful to just talk about the trends, the, the cycle we're in. Well, I think, you know, one of the things that I'm sure we're all, you know, we have seen is, you know, consumer confidence, unfortunately, has declined more than, you know, has declined more than 15% uh, over 2011. You know, we have, you know, concerns about household incomes, which have stagnated, um, you know, are, are now below levels that we haven't seen literally since 1996, um, and that is a result of kind of medium household income has fallen in the last, you know, is, is literally fallen three years in a row. And, you know, that obviously is an issue when it comes to folks going to the markets, and I'm talking about all markets, whether it's automobile or, uh, you know, the, the, the supermarkets or the other types of markets, when they're thinking about buying you know, one of the big drivers, obviously, of the consumer markets over the past has been the home equity uh, that many people obviously took advantage of. Well, we obviously have seen that since 2006, those home equity uh, values have, have fallen literally almost in half. You know, but the interesting thing is personal spending has continued to rise. So it's somewhat of a dichotomy out there, but, you know, as the income gap continues to widen, there's clearly, uh, you know, a disparity uh, between those that have and those that don't in the country. And so, and, and that also, I think, bodes for the world. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with respect to the consumer over these coming years. Well, it seems that these companies have, uh, they're strong and, and holding cash. are going to be in a great position to evaluate opportunities and, and seize those opportunities as they, as they unfold. And the, the companies that I have a have a good balance sheet and a good value proposition will be attractive to them. So on a related note to that, I'd like to get your viewpoint. What role does a brand play in preparing a company for a, a potential sale or merger? Well, we, you know, we it's a it's a it's a great question, and and the answer to that is it's number one. The the brand is a huge driver in terms of the value of the businesses. Certainly, many of whom that we have represented over the years, and I, and I think that. Uh, internally that have been responsible, you know, both internally and externally, from the standpoint of really positioning uh, and placing that brand into the market segments that, that it is best suited for, um, have really realized, you know, huge value in terms of the multiples that buyers are willing to pay uh, to have that as part of their portfolio. Um, and yet it's important not to be misled that branding in and of itself, I'm sorry, the brands in and of itself um, are, you know, are incredibly important and understanding your market position as it relates to that brand is also important. And, and I think maybe a, a quick example of that, Ryan, I can give you is that 
what we've seen recently in terms of the values um, of businesses is that there is kind of a, a kind of a, an optimism, and really kind of this is the shift of value-oriented brands. Um, you know, the growth of value brands is significantly outpacing industry average as consumers, in many instances, trade down to less expensive national brands and private labels. But yet, you've got kind of a, a migration where you know, really premier brands, and you talk about the Apples and maybe the Leicas and you know the BMWs, uh, people are willing to pay for those brands. And then you've got on the lower end, you know, you've got the, the great example, I think, probably is in the automotive industry, where you've got the Kias that are just absolutely taking market share away from the Toyotas, who, you know, have long, you know, kind of held a position of being tried and true, a, a solid performer, but they've kind of lost a lot of their luster. So it's interesting to kind of see what's going on in the markets today as it, as it relates to the consumer brands. Well, I think those are two great examples. Uh, big shift in consumers' belief, and it's being shifted significantly by the uh, the positioning of those brands and the clarity of what they're offering. So, mm -hmm. on a related note, how do you go about evaluating the potential of a brand uh, and, and and that impact and the multiple being considered? Um, I think that's a that's a, that's a really really good question. Uh, you know, it's a little tricky. Fortunately, we are not we are not clairvoyance. We are not really <laughs> good at at really kind of looking way out there into the future. We we kind of leave that to the to the brilliant minds of folks like yourself, and obviously those companies that are able to kind of look way beyond kind of what Houlihan looks at or, or investment bankers generally look at. You know, we, we, we try to be realistic in terms of when we take on an assignment and we look at the positioning of the existing brand with maybe some tiered categories that, that are now going to be part of that. I remember we had a, uh, you know, years ago we, we had a uh, door manufacturer that was a, that was a very, very well-known brand and I'm kind of blanking on the name of it here for a sec, but uh, they really, when the, when the building industry was really uh, at, its, uh, at its prime and there was a lot of demand for various types of branded product, these guys were really at the top of their field. And they had introduced or were planning on introducing some hardware that went along with their, their window designs. And, uh, and quite frankly, we didn't see it. We, we didn't know really kind of how to attribute value specifically to this new bit of hardware that, were, that w was going to be part of the offering. The good news, though, is that when we went to the market and we positioned it as they had described as really kind of being evolutionary and, and really state-of-the-art, Fortunately, the market at the time really saw the value add of basically having the complement of both the window as well as this new, what they believed, innovative hardware, and did pay up essentially for that uh, new business and certainly new business line that would really probably start, as we looked at the numbers, probably start achieving pace and traction over the next two to three years. Well, I think that's uh, very insightful. So you help position the brand and the company for the future, and then you let the market put a value on it. That's correct. Okay, great. Well, we define brand as a promise of distinction, which is a clear differentiation from the competition. How important is it for an organization to have a clear brand promise already defined when they reach out to you, or is that something that you actually help the, the firm develop? Well, I, I think, I, I think as, you, as you aptly stated, uh, I mean, we really leave that up to the management to achieve the promise that they have essentially spoken of. You know, one of, the, one of the areas that we try to stay away from is, you know, we know what we know, we know what we don't know. But, you know, oftentimes because we deal with literally over a thousand different businesses on an annual basis, uh, and a lot of that work, by the way, we do, uh, Ryan, in the in our valuation area, which is a, a this is really kind of where Houlihan originally achieved the basis of, of the firm that it's now become. So we look at a lot of the intangibles with respect to value, 
and oftentimes what you define as a promise of dis- distinction, be it the, uh, the name, be it the specific product, we really rely on the firm to ho- hopefully drive that, and sometimes it languishes. It really has lost a lot of the, uh, you know, that, that one-time luster that it once had. And, you know, over the past three years, people have been reluctant to spend the dollars necessary oftentimes to really, really bolster, if you will, or kind of bring about some newness and freshness to the brand. And uh, we, uh, you know, we understand that. The problem is, is that the market basically punishes you for that. And unless you've stayed the course and really invested money and and really done those things, that there really would be suggest- that there really would be. Suggest-